Hey, welcome to this edition of Snowmobiler Television. On this week's show, we've got Tyler Swarm, our resident Western rider, here to tell us about his Eastern Trails experience in New Brunswick. Then I'm up in Cochrane, Ontario, driving a groomer, badly. And Rich and I are talking about a pair of work and play sleds. And it all starts now. STV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Polaris Snowmobiles, together we are born for more. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of trucks for 53 years. Tough, smart, capable. All right, so we're finally getting a chance to sit down at the end of our New Brunswick trip here with Tyler Swarm, who's uh, one of our pro mountain riders for photography in OSM Magazine and video for STV. And normally we see Tyler out west and we decided that this would be a great opportunity to finally bring a mountain rider back east to experience what we experience, trail rides. I mean, mountain stuff is great, a lot of fun, but we're flatlanders, we're trail guys. Yeah. And I mean, how many times have we talked about being at Snowshoe, talking to you guys about trails are cool too, guys. Like they are. You know, mountain stuff is cool, and it's on everybody's bucket list. Yeah. For but sure. uh, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but when not, when we're talking about coming to ride trails and how great it is and and what it's like, originally we're like were your eyes glassing over? Going, oh yeah. For years, you guys have been telling me about this, and I'm like, okay, how cool can trails really be? Like yeah. you sit there, it's a flat groom trail and you just go ride for the day and like how much fun could that be yeah but i'm out here i've ridden the trails for like four days now and it is it is insane what these trails are like, like so we're cool too then oh more than cool i feel bad for all the years i didn't believe you that the trails were awesome to ride i mean it's it's not yeah. just flat it's up down left right bumps jumps it's everything you can imagine maybe let's start with talking about your trail experience before uh snowshoot and doing that stuff I mean what's trail like for home because Idaho is home for you yes yeah my whole trail experience uh, my whole life really has been the incorrect trail experience I should say so <laughs> we ride snowmobiles that are long tall and narrow and that just equals a tippy ride that's not enjoyable on the trail and so but automatically my whole life uh, trails just haven't appealed to me we ride as little of trail as possible just to get to that good powder, the deep snow, whatever, yeah. the big hills. Um, but out here, it is a whole different story. I mean, there's warming huts every 30, 40 clicks. There's uh, restaurants out in the middle of nowhere, places to fuel up. Um, I mean, it's just a whole different story. And the big part of it is the snowmobile clubs and how many people are involved out here making yeah. it happen. It, I, mean, I mean, without, the volunteers, right? I mean, right. Uh, in New Brunswick, I mean, everybody that's grooming the trails and brushing the trails and building the trails, I mean, they're doing just a phenomenal job of it. Yes. And it's, uh, I mean, that's that's the passion for snowmobiling that's that's in Flatlands. And I mean, I know there's a huge passion for snowmobiling when you're in the mountains. Of course. And But it's, it's different. Because you guys don't really have the organization out there. I mean, there's some areas that are, that are pretty organized. Mm -hmm. But how does that compare to here, do you think? Oh, where I'm from at least, it doesn't compare at all. I mean, they're just worried about, okay, how do I get to the mountain as quick as possible, go shred up that powder and drop off the cornice and then call it a day. Whereas out here, you know, it's everyone's making sure we're having a good time. You know, we're staying safe, we got good trails, we got places to go and uh, fun loops to go on. I mean, yeah. it's endless out here. It's, it's And uh, for a ride experience, I mean, at West, you're climbing mountains, you're jumping off cornices, you're the, the challenge of, of powder riding and then the technicality of riding in the trees. Yeah. You know, and, and you're, good, you're great at that. I mean, that's Thank why you. we use it for the photography of the magazine. Like, doop, doop, <laughs> there's, there's your horn. <laughs> but what's it like to come back here and, like, and, and ride trails like we've done in the last couple of days here in New Brunswick? Well, there's every bit of technicality, just like riding the mountains. Um, like different though like not the same thing but. right totally different I mean you're you're zipping around corners trying not to overshoot corners uh, tackle the gnarly bumps if it's not groomed you know you've got some rough terrain um, but 
All I can say is, if you're not having fun on the trails, you're just not going fast enough, and you're not trying hard enough. I mean, well, it, it, and, it, and it, there's a threshold for everybody's skill. Yes. But you can find a, a sweet spot riding trails that's that's going to be exhilarating. You know, no matter what speed you're going. I've known for years that these guys are great riders, but to see them on their home turf, see the type of riding they've always done, <laughs> it's crazy. I'm going as hard as I can, and I can't keep up with you guys. Like, I'm trying, I'm trying, and I'm like, okay. Need to back it off a notch because my skill level isn't there yet. And and, and you did what I, I knew was going to happen. I got to tell this story. Oh, so God. we're <laughs> we're going along. We're clipping along down a trail, and it's pretty straight. Great sight lines and everything like that. But all you trail guys out there, I'm sure you know this. That straight trail that looks like it keeps going straight, but at the very last second, there's an arrow and it turns to the right. Yeah. Yeah. So I was out front, and I knew you're coming. I make that right hand turn, and I'm going. I bet she's gonna blow that. So I literally pulled over to the side of the trail and I turned around, sat on my snowmobile and looked backwards. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, this blue streak goes boom. <laughs> right he, blew, he blew the corner, <laughs> knew it was gonna happen. Sure enough. But I mean, it was a safe spot to do it. And if it was, uh, you know, if it was a little bit more dangerous, I probably would have been more interested in flagging you down to tell you to slow down and, and give you that warning that this is coming up. But, mm -hmm. uh, but a great, it just looked like the trail went straight and other people were doing it because there was like seven or eight other yeah. sled trails that went in there, so I knew it was going to happen. But uh, but yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, what do you think this is? What are you actually? What are you going to go back to your buddies back out west and say? Because they're they're going to say, oh yeah, you went trail riding. Sure. Uh, did you have to drink Red Bull like every five seconds to stay awake? You know what right. are they? Yeah, what, yeah. Because it's know, so boring. It's so boring. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to take back to those guys? I think it's going to be challenging to convince them how much fun I had. Because my whole life, like I said, I mean, I've never been focused on trail riding. And now I can't wait to come back out. So I, I hope that next year I can actually bring out a group of my close buddies who have grown up in the mountains and uh, show them what this is all about. Because this has opened up a whole new side of snowmobiling to me that uh, is just a whole new type of fun. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. like mountain riding ever got dull to me or anything. No. But I just love everything snowmobile related, and this just added right to the bag of happiness, I guess. You know, <laughs> I, need to, I need to get out here and do it some more. So, sure. so, from the mountain guy. Yes. Trail riding. Cool or not cool? Absolutely cool. More than cool. You heard it. Yes. So, till next year, you gotta come back. Let's do it. You heard it. We're cool. <laughs> First Burn is brought to you by Best Western, hotels and resorts. All work and no play can make for a dull snowmobile, but in recent years, sleds like the Polaris Titan have kind of blurred the lines between work and play. And now you've got Skidoo for 2020 entering the mix with their own Expedition Extreme. Now to talk about both these sleds, here's a candid conversation between Rich and I about these two epic snowmobiles. All right, so here we go with the comparison between the Polaris Titan and the Skidoo Expedition Extreme. Again, two sleds that are very, very similar on paper and actually in reality too. Yes, no, absolutely. I thought they were very similar. Both 20 inch tracks, yeah. good flotation. Still a surprise, they can go where they can go. Lots Top of Top of the line suspensions in both. I mean, you, if you didn't know you were on a sled with a 20 inch track, and you wouldn't know. I mean, it does feel like you're riding a Clydesdale on both of them. Your feet are way yeah, they're, far apart. Yeah, they're definitely big. Um, but not a bad trail sled. Like, no. we went out, we went riding with one all year round last year, the Titan. Yeah. Had a Titan last few years. Yeah. And I mean, they run 72, 75 miles an hour. Oh, topped yeah. Out. Yeah, a little bit more maybe. But if the, you're all not the carrying... gear that you could put on the back was incredible. Oh, you can run down. The thing weighs 1,000 pounds going down the trail at 75 miles an hour. You could have used a better brake, I think. It, it does tax the braking system on both, I think. But when it's you not- You trying to slow that weight yeah. down, but- But it's not your dad's old station wagon. Like, it, no. it's a badass looking snowmobile. It's cool to ride, both of them. Are, yeah. If you're riding either one of those things, The XC cool. Titan, blacked out, medium smoked windshield, yeah. QS3 shocks. I mean, it was a great sled. The only thing is, is that when you went off trail with it, it stayed on top of the snow. Yeah, it wasn't, it had great flotation, which mm -hmm. is what it's supposed to have, but wasn't real super friendly if you're trying to do a powder hook or something like that. No, no. Now, the Expedition Extreme is that same, I mean, it's it's very Titan-esque. Yep. Um, 
I think maybe slightly higher in performance levels when it comes to, um, you know, it, it's it's banging through the the trail, the chatter. trail, yeah. Or I mean, we had Scallop and he was doubling that thing, yeah. You know, and I, I think it's slightly better in that circumstance. I think the Titan maybe is a little faster. Mm -hmm. So again, very comparable to. to I felt the, there was more one. storage available, like more options available on the Expedition. And that bumper kit, Jeff, I don't know if you know, it's that wraparound front bumper was, th yeah. that is the baddest ass bumper that you can find. That that Expedition Extreme in, in red with, yeah. with the accessories that are on it, I mean, it is, it is a pretty nice yeah. looking sled. I agree with that. And I also think that with the added accessories that they gave, because the big thing for me were, was the accessories available that Skidoo had. Like yeah. you could turn that snowmobile into anything that you wanted. It could be oh, yeah. a woodcutter, it could be a, a fishing, buggy it could be anything right hunting and then when you wanted to strip all that stuff off both of them were very very capable snowmobiles on the trail excellent trail manners i yep. mean they would do anything you needed them to do on the trail both of them would throw a rooster tail at the back that you really don't want to ride behind <laughs> it for about 100 yards yeah <laughs> it was crazy but uh but yeah like you don't have to ride them with a paper bag on your head no there's they're, nothing to be shameful about those no two those are those are cool sleds and super capable if you wanted to do, you know, I think if you had like a big uh, overnight tour, you know, yep. three or four destinations, and uh, we did that with the Titan on yep. a number of occasions, everybody put their junk on your sled, though. That was kind of the only drawback to the Titan is you were you were the pack mule who carried everything. <laughs> but it would do it and, and it would keep up with the crowd. Oh, As a boy. matter of fact, it would lead the crowd in a lot of cases. And uh, although we haven't had that opportunity with the Expedition Extreme, I feel it would be exactly the same. So you're like the UPS plane. <laughs> taken off to the next stop <laughs> yeah and, and the great thing when uh, my with, bag sir well with on snow in the magazine yeah. we can pack at least five boxes of magazines on the back of the titan <laughs> right. and it does work really well to have that counterweight back there because it'll wheelie forever <laughs> and again i think the expedition extreme will do the same thing. i agree with that i think the expedition is a great sled Last season, the crew of STV went to Cochrane, Ontario with a very special guest. Levi Lavallee joined us for a hometown tour of Cochrane. Now, Levi had an excellent time visiting this Ontario town where snowmobiles are such a part of the community's fabric, but there's more to this story than just Levi's experience there. I think Cochrane does a good job to welcome everybody like they were all Levi Lavallees, you know, because Cochrane needs snowmobile season to help our economy. So all the snowmobilers that come to Cochrane, they're always well welcomed, they're embraced very well. We show them a lot of the trails, we take the time to show our district which trail to go to. So they're all kind of little superstars to us as well because without them coming to Cochrane, and you need a reason to come to Cochrane, and our reason during the winter time is our beautiful number one snowmobile trails in the world. This is how we call it, our little phrase we say there, to uh, bring people here, but when they do, they feel very welcome and we really work hard to make sure that they come back. When you feel welcome somewhere, it really makes your experience a lot better. From the hotel that we stayed at, the Best Western, they were great, you know, all, right from the start of this trip, it's just been outstanding. And being able to go out and ride, you've got amazing riding, great snow, and seeing how well manicured the trails are. I mean, one, they're, I mean, it was like a freeway. They were so smooth. They did a great job grooming up here, and there was a ton of snow. You know, we, there was a couple times where we were able to get off trail, and I mean, you're you're doing powder turns through three feet of, of snow, right? So I mean, it was awesome out there. I'm going back to tell people Cochrane is an amazing snowmobile trip. Definitely one you should try out. Definitely a, a bucket list one to go to.
Yeah, our sawmill season basically starts in Cochrane mid-December and we typically groom our trails to about the 8th or 10th of April and the last riders probably are come to uh, come to Cochrane and enjoy the last bit of the trails say the middle of April that's kind of so mid-December to mid-April. Most riders that have been to Cochrane they they know Cochrane trails is uh, um, basically long and wide and uh, groomed two passes wide so 18 feet wide and some great snow conditions usually they're pretty quiet not too busy so um, um, that's basically Cochrane's trails and and pretty remote trails as well um, most of our trails our longest trails is, is the Abitibi Canyon Trail so 145 kilometers back in the in the bush um, and but most of the other trails closer to town are still 40 40 some kilometers out of town um, where we meet other clubs that groom toward us it's so great and it's a great place to come so in Cochrane you know it's like a hub you know you can go north towards James Bay you can go uh, west towards you know Smith Falls Gap Hearst uh, south towards Timmins, and uh, just east of us, you can go towards uh, the province of Quebec. Uh, you can go towards Irk Falls, Matheson, so really a, a central area where people come to Cochrane, they can come here and ride to different areas, never ride the same trails all the time. So it's, it's exciting for us, but it's also exciting for the people that want to come kind of ride the trails, not always ride the same trails. If you come snow building to Cochrane, you're going to enjoy your experience, and you'll want to come back. Hey, stick around, because coming up after the break, I get to drive a groomer. Okay, so we're up here riding in Cochrane, Ontario, and Kenny, the president of the Snowmobile Club up here, said that if I wanted to ride these trails that I had to go to work, so he asked if I wanted to run the groomer for a while, and of course, I said yes, because who doesn't want to run a groomer? Since you tore up our trails for the last couple days, we're going to show you how to groom them now. I didn't tear up any trails. So how do I make this thing move? This, well, this, this is, this is the, blade. the blade, so up. There we go. That's going up. That's, oh, okay. Sideways. How do I... Which gotta, is... So first thing you got to do is that there's a hydraulic brake and a, and a brake brake. So okay. you release both of them. There we go. And then the forward and reverse buttons is no, on top is that there. Yeah. You need to push, push down. Okay, I'm in reverse. Yeah. Okay, so I'll back up. Back up. And just turn the steering wheel easy. Raise your blade. Yeah, making a groomer move. So I'd like to maybe plow some snow up yep. into there. Yep. I'm gonna go this way. Cool. And try not to hit the camera guy, so we'll go over here. That's nice. The blade's half the fun. Oh yeah. Does it angle side to yeah. side too? Yeah. It's uh, one of those first, first or two buttons. Angle it, push it. Push it. No. Nope. Which one? That second there. Oh yeah. There you go. Okay, I see what you mean. I can see how close I can get to the camera guy. That's pretty close. This isn't any fun at all. I could play all day on this. So my... Uh, Qualified to operator groomer for the Polar Bear Snowmill Club yeah, up here. Probably give you a shot. And we'll wipe him away. <laughs> You're probably thinking, if health and safety watches this, he's gonna kill us. <laughs> All right. Well, I better put this thing away before I break something. But uh, thanks job, for the, thanks job. for the chance of uh, let me run a groomer. Every opportunity is a good one. Awesome. I'm not sure if I'll get the keys to actually run this thing on the trails because I would just probably screw them up, but it'd be fun to practice a little bit more anyways. See you later. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching this week. Until next time, 
keep burning them dinosaurs, but make sure you keep the rubber side down. STV has been brought to you by Ultimax Belts. Performance driven, performance proven. CKX, wear your passion. On Snow Magazine, for snowmobilers, from snowmobilers. Hey, welcome to this round of YouTube comment of the day. And this comment comes from our snowmobiling in West Yellowstone, Montana video, and it's from Game Trim VD. Anyways, Game Trim has to say, um, now bear with me, big breath. I'm 12 now, I was 11 when I was riding there with my snowmobile, it's nice there, but if you get stuck, it's hard to get out, LOL. My snowmobile is orange and my brothers, my stepdad and my mom is on a big snowmobile. I'm going there to snowmobile this Christmas and my mom is getting a snowmobile, see so slow, squinty face emoji, squinty face emoji. And my stepdad is get one of the new snowmobiles, two top is nice, I like to go fast, I'm hardcore on my riding but I get scared sometimes but I still ride, I also ride in Michigan. Well, Game Trim, even though punctuation isn't your thing right now, you, my friend, are my hero. You are the future of snowmobiling, and I love the fact that you're into snowmobiling. And by the way, you are absolutely correct about how great West Yellowstone is to ride. And if you're going there this Christmas, I'd be giving the folks a big hug right about now because that is going to be special to go there for Christmas. Uh, I am kind of sorry, though, that you got to ride in Michigan. Can't always be West Yellowstone. Anyways, keep the comments coming. I love them, especially you, Game Trip VD. You are my hero.